Welcome everybody, in today's video we will cover 50 must-know high-yield rapid review questions for your pulmonary exam. These questions are all super high-yield, so the first question is as important as the last one as you may encounter during your exam, so knowing this high-yield information will significantly help you with your testing score. So here we go, question number one. What is the most common tumor causing SIADH? And that would be the small cell lung tumor. So small cell lung tumor is associated with SIADH. In a question stem, they may tell you the patient has a small cell lung tumor, and you're going to tell you which one of these conditions could be associated with this, and that would be SIADH. Number two, most common virus causing the common cold. Common cold is most commonly caused by rhinovirus. And the way I remember this, as you guys should create your own little mnemonic, little stories to help you recall information fast, is rhinovirus, so rhino, rhino got the cold. And when it's talking about the common cold, I would just ask myself, which animal did it got the cold? And that would be rhino. So rhinovirus. You'll see in the answers, select it, move on to the next question. Question number three. Tension pneumothorax triad. So if you see these three in a question stamp, that should be pointing you to tension pneumothorax. So a patient may present with hypotension, JVD, and an absent breath sounds in that lung. So they may tell you there's a trauma, a penetrating wound, could be just spontaneous, but they'll have hypotension, JVD, and you'll hear absent breath sounds in that lung. Tension pneumothorax. Question number four. Most common cause of croup most common cause of croup is parainfluenza virus. Parainfluenza flu, parainfluenza virus, and I'll just say croup got the flu. So when I talk about croup, when I think about croup, I think croup got a flu, parainfluenza virus. Barking cough should make you think of what? Patient comes in and mother reports patients having a barking cough at night, and that would be croup. What is Samster's triad? Samson's triad is aspirin sensitivity, nasal polyposis, and asthma. So they may ask you which one of these three are part of Samson's triad, and they can list different three options. If you see aspirin sensitivity, nasal polyposis, and asthma, that is Samson's triad, or they can list all these three and say, may ask you which triad is this, and in that case, it's Samson's. What is the drug of choice for pertussis? When it comes to pertussis, the drug of choice is macrolide, likely azithromycin. What is the most common symptom of community-acquired pneumonia? So in a stem, you should look for a patient that has a cough with a purulent sputum, uh, presents with fever and dyspnea. So fever and dyspnea plus purulent sputum with cough, think community-acquired pneumonia. What is the treatment of choice for strep pharyngitis? So when we talk about strep pharyngitis, we treat that with penicillin VK. Penicillin VK, strep pharyngitis. When can a patient with a strep return to the school? So in the question stem, you may encounter something that uh, you know mother brings in a kid, they've been diagnosed with strep, you describe antibiotics, and the mother is asking you when can a kid come back to the school, and the answer is after being on antibiotics for 24 hours. So they're going to tell you immediately, 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, the answer is 24 hours after starting antibiotics. Alright guys, for all of you that have already subscribed to my channel, left the comments, thank you very much, that significantly helps the channel. For those of you that haven't, please take a look around. I make a video for every class in the didactic here, just like this for the 50 high yield questions, as well for EOR and PANS. I put all these questions in a book you can find on Amazon for 20 bucks. It will significantly help you with testing scores. It's a brilliant last minute like question yourself. Uh, check it out, see what you think, and let's continue. Metroprolol should be used with caution in patients with which airway disease? And that would be reactive and asthma patient. So in the question stem, they can tell you the patient has asthma and they have hypertension and they're going to tell you which of these hypertensive medications you should be cautious about giving to this patient and that would be metroprolol. So beta blockers, be you know careful with reactive asthma disease. What's ronchi? So ronchi are a loud rumbling, R for R, ronchi, rumbling. Rumbling sounds heard in auscultation of bronchi obstructed by sputum. So they can word this any way they want to, but they're going to say rumbling. So if you think rumbling, think RR, rumbling, ronchi. 
most common cause of cardiac arrest in children is respiratory arrest. 14. Most common pneumonia bug. When it comes to pneumonia, they're going to tell you this is patient with purulent sputum, fever, and dyspnea, and they're going to ask you which one of these organisms is most likely to cause, and that would be strep pneumo. Community acquired pneumonia versus hospital community acquired pneumonia cap versus H cap, you should be running which score, and that would be the drip score. If it's greater than 4, it is H cap. So in the question stem, they're going to tell you drip score of different variations, but if you see a greater than 4, you should be thinking H cap. Pneumonia site of care is determined by what? Pneumonia site of care is determined by curb 65. So run Kirby 65 and it will tell you where that patient needs to go. Outpatient pneumonia treatment. So they're going to tell you this patient with pneumonia, uh, you're going to discharge them or you see them in the family medicine and you're going to give them azithromycin and you're going to add augmentin if antibiotics are given in the last 60 days. So this is really high yield. So they're going to give you azithromycin but they're going to ask you when would you add augmentin. Or they can be sneaky and question stem and they say the patient was on antibiotics last month and now they're with pneumonia, what would you like to prescribe? Well, if they had antibiotics in the last 60 days, you will do azithromycin and you're going to add augmentin. What is the LIGHTS criteria used for? The LIGHTS criteria is used for plural effusion. So if you have a question stem and they mention the LIGHTS criteria, you should be thinking about diagnosis of pleural effusion. And if they tell you this is a pleural effusion, you see it in a chest x-ray, they're going to tell you which criteria to use, and that would be a LIGHTS criteria. PEDS pneumonia treatment. For pediatric pneumonia, we treat that with amoxicillin. Epiglottitis, 3 Ds. So 3 Ds of epiglottitis are dysphagia, drooling and distress. So patient are going to be in a tripod position, leaning forward, dysphagia, drooling and distress. All of that should make you think of epiglottitis and you should be getting a lateral neck x-ray. Epiglottitis bug. That would be Hib, Haemophilus influenza. Hib, epiglottitis. Croup age. So no different age presentation can significantly help you when selecting the right answer because if you know certain diseases present in a certain age, that can help you like narrow down your answers. So the croup will appear in a six months to three years old. If pulmonary embolism patient has a contrast allergy, so they cannot get a CTA, what is the next best test? So in a question stem, they're going to tell you this patient has contrast allergy, uh, you suspect that they have pulmonary embolism, and they're going to ask you what's the next best test. Because they have the contrast allergy, we're going to go with the VQ scan. Or they can tell you when is the VQ scan uh, preferred over CTA, and that would be when the patient has a contrast allergy. Or they could be pregnant. In that case, you don't want to expose them to radiation, so we'll get a VQ scan. PE chest x-ray can show what? So the PE chest x-ray will show watermark sign and a Hampton hump. PE EKG findings. So for PE EKG findings, you're going to look for prominent S wave in a lead 1, Q wave in a lead 3, and inverted T wave in a lead 3 as well. And the easiest way to remember this is S1, Q3, T3. So you see S1, Q3, T3 in the stem, you should be thinking PE, and if it's asking you what are the findings, so the answer is S1, Q3, T3. Pregnant patient anticoagulation treatment. So for pregnant patients, we're going to use low molecular weight heparin. So they're going to tell you this is a pregnant patient who was diagnosed with a PE, and they would like you to be treated with anticoagulation. They're going to list heparin, warfarin, um, other ones like something else. So look for a low molecular weight heparin for pregnant patients with a PE. Renal failure, the GFR less than 30 PE patient, we're going to treat these people with unfractionated heparin. Unfractionated heparin for renal failure. Most common cause of infant hospitalization is, that would be RSV. So if you're talking about a little kid, 
likely less than one year old, RSV is the most common cause of hospitalization. RSV presentation. So this kid is going to have that wet cough. Intercostal retractions is a really high yield. So they're going to tell you while you're observing the patient's breathing, you're going to see those intercostal retractions. So all those muscles between the ribs are retracting. Scattered crackles, expiratory wheezes, bilateral, and decreased PO intake, and they likely have fever as well. So if you hear about intercostal retractions, fever, wheezing, you should be thinking RSV. Pneumocytis. Urobichi pneumonia is treated, so PJP is treated with what? It is treated with Bactrim. So if you in a question stem, this will likely be a patient with a history of AIDS, uh, and they're going to present with like lung issues, uh, pointing to pneumonia, and so PJP is treated with Bactrim. Treatment for asthma patient with PFR less than 50. Less than 50, we need to admit these patients. So they can give you different medications, admit them, release them, so forth. If the PFR is less than 50, we should be admitting these patients. 32. What stands to try it? So asthma, nasal polyposis, and an aspirin NSAIDs allergy. Stands to try it, asthma, nasal polyposis, aspirin, and NSAIDs allergy. First line treatment for acute asthma. For acute asthma, we're going to give them SABA, which is albuterol. So they're going to give you a question stem for acute asthma, and they're going to ask you what's the best first-line treatment, and that is albuterol. Anticholinergics used in asthma. That would be ipatropium. Side effects are thirst, dry, urinary tension, and dysphagia. So in a question stem, they're going to tell you, you use ipatropium, and one of these side effects is associated with it. They're going to list different things. So if you see thirst, dry, urinary retention, or dysphagia, that is likely due to ipatropium. 35. Patient with cystic fibrosis and pneumonia, what is the bug involved? That will be pseudomonas. So if the patient has cystic fibrosis, and now they're diagnosed with pneumonia, the likely bug is pseudomonas. So several the questions then, they'll tell you the patient has a history of cystic fibrosis. They're going to list a couple of other ones as, you know, to trip you up. And they're going to tell you the patient has pneumonia now, which is the most likely bug involved. They're going to list like strep pneumo, staph aureus, something else. But pseudomonas is the answer. Cystic fibrosis plus pneumonia equals pseudomonas. Side effects of beclometasone. So side effects of beclometasone are trush. So a patient comes in with a trush, they're taking different medications, and they're going to ask you which one of these is most likely to cause, and that will be beclometasone. Montelukast is used for what? So Montelukast is used for asthma caused by allergic rhinitis, aspirin-induced. So they tell you the patient has asthma, they were on aspirin for certain reasons, or they would have allergic rhinitis, and they're going to ask you what would you like to treat it with. In this case, is Montelukast. COPD patients under the age of 40 could have what deficiency? So they'll tell you this is a 35-year-old male that comes in with breathing problems, with wheezing and so forth. Uh, you see the flat diaphragms on that chest x-ray barrel chest, so forth, so you figure out this is a COPD, but if they're less than 40, they likely have A1 antitrypsin deficiency. A1 antitrypsin deficiency, COPD patients less than 40. Emphysema, ABG will show what? For emphysema, you will find respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis, emphysema. Chronic bronchitis, ABG will show what? respiratory acidosis. So acidosis for chronic bronchitis and alkalosis for emphysema. Barrel chest and personal breathing is seen with what? So if you have a patient that has barrel chest, you got that personal breathing that is associated with emphysema, COPD. How to differentiate asthma classification by FEV1? So in the question stem, they're going to give you different numbers for FEV1. They're going to tell you what is the classification of this patient's asthma. So the mild asthma will have FEV1 greater than 80, moderate 60 to 80, and severe will be less than 60. So if the patient has FEV1 of 50, that is severe, 
FPV 170, moderate, and so forth. What's the only medical therapy proven to decrease the mortality in a COPD patients? Well, that's oxygen. That's why you see all those people with the uh, oxygen tanks walking around, they likely have COPD. OSA treatment. That would be mild to moderate, we'll treat with CPAP, and if severe, we're going to treat the obstructive sleep apnea with the BiPAP. Severe OSA, BiPAP, mild to moderate CPAP. Most common cause of atypical walking pneumonia. Atypical walking pneumonia is seen with the soldiers or in the dermatologist, and it's usually mycoplasma. So mycoplasma, atypical walking pneumonia. Mycoplasma pneumonia is usually seen in which groups of people, so we already said this, college and military. Legionella is associated with Cooling towers, AC, contaminated water supply. So you're going to tell you it's the elderly patient that comes in from the retirement center. They have the swamp coolers. Now they have pneumonia. And you're going to ask you what's the most likely cause. And that would be Legionella. So anything to do with water, AC, cooling systems, think Legionella. Most common bug in alcoholics with pneumonia. That would be Klebsiella. So in the question stem, they're going to tell you the patient comes in with pneumonia, reported uh, alcoholic use or use of alcohol in excess. So if there's alcohol involved with pneumonia, you should be thinking Klebsiella. 49. Aspiration pneumonia bug. So if you're talking about aspiration pneumonia, this will be the anaerobes. Number 50. Most common cause of bronchiectasis in the United States. So when it comes to bronchiectasis in the United States, cystic fibrosis due to the pseudomonas. So earlier, if you see cystic fibrosis, you should always think pseudomonas. All right, guys, this brings us to the end of the pulmonary. I hope you find this video helpful. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about these videos. Let me know how I can improve them, and I will be super happy to hear all your comments so do check out a book and i will see you guys in the next video